everybody. How are you? Good morning. Good morning from across the pond. See what I did there? With the thing. <laughs> um, good morning to you. You know, it's a special show. Uh, Quilt Nerd isn't on in the mornings in the United States at this time. At this time. We do an evening show. Um, but today is a special show, uh, which is really uh, a love letter, a thank you note to all the people in different time zones who have watched Quilt Nerd or are watching Quilt Nerd right now. Um, I started this show, uh, but people in different time zones who can't watch the evening show most of the time, evening for us, because it's three in the morning or so, you know, where you are. Um, I started this show in London. We were living in London and I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to broadcast my research on quilts and my explorations in the world world of quilts and quilt culture, which is to say I want to broadcast my research and my explorations in art and history and people, uh, women and men and friends beyond the binary. I want to explore all those things, but I am tired of doing it by myself. And I find so many great things as I'm studying quilts for lectures or magazines, different projects that I do. And so I saw a journalist who's 24 years old and really just brilliant. She has a, she had a show on Twitch. I saw it when I was in London where she broadcast her research and I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it too. And if the kids are on Twitch, that's where I'm going. YouTube, forget about it. Um, so, so, so that's how it started. And, and, and it started a year ago this week. And we couldn't have done it. We could not be here without the people in the UK and beyond, uh, South Africa, Kuwait, uh, friends that we have all over the world. And so I had to make sure for anniversary week that I did a special show in the morning so that you folks who can't see the show at night, who have to catch the replay, which is great. The, re the replay crew, I love the replay crew. I watch a lot of the live streams I like on replay because I can't make the show. So, um, so thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you just for watching and for being, many of you being there from the, the very beginning when I didn't even have a green screen or music underneath the opening scene or, or Stephanie cake. I have, I have cake in my life. I also have pie and I know Susanna who's in Kuwait uh, may be able to join us. She's the pie to the cake's cake. And God bless both of them. I don't know how I did it without you two. Cake, good morning. Oh, shucks, good morning. <laughs> how, and how are you this morning? I'm good. You know, despite the fact I'm an East Coaster and yeah. should be feeling, you know, like I've been up for hours, um, <laughs> I've had to have an extra coffee this morning. <laughs> you know, I have had, oh, wait, where is my coffee? And by the way, um, I, I hope that you're loud enough. I know it's hard for you to hear you, but you know, like I, I think you're fine, but my mic is placed a little bit differently. So if anybody okay. has any trouble, just if you could watch for that, that would be great because I forgot. Um, so yes, I've got my, I've got my coffee here uh, and I've got healthy yogurt, which I'm not gonna eat. I'm gonna have something a little bit well, it's probably, it's just as nutritious. I don't know. It's like a new protein bar. Anyway, so Cake, you're doing well. You've got extra coffee. Hey, we did a hype train. We did a hype oh, train. We got a gift sub. Oh, that's great. Oh, oh no. We oh, got no. our little kitty. We got the, the kitty, the kitty came by? Mm-hmm, oh. we got a gift sub and the kitty came by. That's so great. Susan R. Michael gifted two garnet letters. That is so cool. Susan R. Michael. You're an OG. You've been with the show a long time, and I appreciate that. And Garnet, so what just happened, Garnet Letters? First of all, thank you for being here. Um, you can subscribe to this show, um, and uh, that's really great when you do, because it helps support the show, uh, which takes, you know, it takes a lot of work. It's really true. And um, I like to travel around and go to different quilt shows like we did this week in New York City. Um, and these things, you know, take resources and, and all that. And so if you want to support the show, subscribing is a great way to do it. You can subscribe at tier one, $4.99. You can subscribe at tier two, $9.99. Or you can join the few, the proud, tier three subscribers, $24.99. I'm a terrible salesperson, uh, so I'm not gonna do too much except to say that there are perks um, including to subscribing, <clears throat> including 
uh, being entered in the giveaways. And this is anniversary week, so we've done a giveaway every show, right? Every show. Because there, there was one, yeah. right? There was one on Tuesday with Hannah, there's one this morning, and then there's one tomorrow night for the big blowout anniversary show bash. Usually we do the show on Saturday nights, uh, not Friday nights mostly, but, to, but Saturday's my birthday. So I thought for the rest of our lives, <laughs> so August 5th, the Twitch anniversary, and August 6th, my birthday. It would be easy to remember them and not schedule anything else, you know, for those two days. Um, anyway, so, and, and so Garnet, here's the one thing to know, and then I'll start saying hi to some folks uh, personally um, and get to that, and then I'll get to the quilt behind me, uh, and, we'll, and we'll do the giveaway about halfway through, Cake. What do you say? During the cake break or at the... Sounds good. Okay, great, because Cake is going to um, draw for the winner. Uh, and I'll tell you what it is, though, before before that. Um, Garnet, what you, welcome. And if you see welcome baskets in the chat for you, if we've got welcome baskets for Garnet, that would be great. Um, we're glad you're here. And that gift subscription uh, from Susan lasts one month. So you've got a month to sort of see what's, what does it feel like to be a subscriber. Um, you can use different emojis and stuff in the chat and, and it's nice. And you get access to the Discord where we hang out. It's kind of like a clubhouse. You can post pictures and chat and stuff. Um, so you get all of that. And so when it went a month from now, uh, if you like what this is, then I hope you will join as a member because that gift subscription lasts one, one month. And I don't think I've, I've really talked about that cake. So I think some people get gift subscriptions and they, they don't realize that they have to, after a month, they have to make a choice. Um, so, so hey everybody. So, oh, oh boy, oh boy. It's really, I like a morning show. I have to say, I do like a morning show. Um, Stephanie's like, Ugh. <laughs> um, so let's see, I got Fyodor coming in with the music. I love that. I love that very much. Um, my hype train thing is covering up a couple people, but I, I'm sure Myra's here. I hope Myra's here. Uh, Myra's the, the first one in the door a lot of times, which is so cool. I love that. Thank you so much for just being like, let's begin the show, because that's kind of how it feels when you come. Um, Miscellanean Nose to Quilts, Nose to Quilts, happy anniversary from the UK. And to you, Nose to Quilts. I think you're in Wales, perhaps, perhaps. Um, M. Sue John, hey, and Susan, Stitch and Deb. Topher, it's so good to see you. I think you were at the show on Tuesday, right? With Hannah. What, what a fun crack up that was. Um, Marianne Tea Cake. I was like, if Marianne's not here, it's not a show from London. I mean, London. Hey, Yavana. Yvonne, I have something for you um, today, later. Okay, uh, Bonnie is here and Cake is here. Okay, that's good. Um, M. Hicks, morning from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Perhaps you will enjoy this water, body of water. Um, <clears throat> it's not from the Pacific Northwest, but it is a body of water, which I know you are familiar with. Um, so on positive threads, I like that, positive indeed. Um, Peace Love Puppies is here. Rhonda, Rhonda Cranoodle's here, oh my god. Sony's here, Sony's here, it's the gang. Queen Bee Quilting, morning from NEPA. Northeast Pennsylvania, is that where you come from? Queen Bee, I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad everybody's here. It's like a morning meeting, except <laughs> way more fun than a morning meeting. Uh, Tani, Tani's got strong coffee. Ivy Kadivy, wah! I am Ivy. I'm, I'm live. It's a it's a special bonus show for the folks from beyond, from beyond. Um, so if I missed you, I will say hi to you. Bips here. No, so thank you for subscribing. You've subscribed for ten months. I'll say hi to, to more folks as we go as we go through. Rhonda, thank you for subscribing, and thanks to my mods who help welcome people, who help keep trolls out of the chat. But you know, we've really. For, for Hey, Richard, um, for, the, for the year that we've been doing this, another thing I like about Twitch, we have had, y'all, I mean, can we count on like one hand the number of like trolls we've had in here? Don't you think, Cake? We have not had many. Maybe it's two hands, but like in a live you know, stream, that's good. And you know, the thing is, the trolley people, I mean, at least one of them asked you uh, for your hand in marriage. So. Oh, that <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, and 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 most of the time, and you know, we kind of have a rule, and the mods know this. You know, we don't we don't pay them much mind because what they want is attention. You know, and if you give it to them, you know, you feed the troll, and that's bad. Hey, Scrapitude, Miss Eleni. Oh, mouse. Yes. So, 
So we just kind of were like, oh, you. And they usually go away. But Twitch is really good about about trolls. And anyway, we have settings and things that are on that. So we don't, uh, like, you can't say certain words in here. <laughs> so if you do, your chat won't go through. Sometimes it's funny that that happens. Um, <laughs> you want it. So Kitty Hannah highlighted her message with some channel points and says, Mary, I just want you to know. Oh, don't even, don't even. I, I might... I might get a little emotional. It's been a it's been a ride. It's been the coolest thing. So Kitty Hannah says, Mary, I just want you to know how much I love this show and this community. I have learned so much. We have laughed and cried, indeed. It's just great to have something that is all mine and right up my alley. It's my corner of the world where I escape. Thank you. Thank you to everyone involved with the show. Woo! What you said, Kitty. It's like, yeah, because there's nothing like Quilt Nerd. I mean, there's nothing like there's nothing like Wiltner, but there's nothing like it. And I think I think the early early viewers, the early uh, adapters, you, you know, you got it. You got it. You're 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 looking to the future, and you're seeing the way quilt studies cha can cha can change the opportunities here. And everybody, you know, looking at social media, it's great. It's great. But when we look behind us and we get these dusty books it's like oh right the reason we're here enjoying quilts and many of us making them is because of everybody who came before us and the more I think about the art quilters you know um, in the 60s 70s 80s it's like what they were doing when we were looking at Judith Lazare oh, I can't remember how to spell her name but with Hannah the other night it's like you look at like Marie Webster quilts and then you look at you know, these, well, Polly and Burbage, I mean, they broke the grid. They they just did a lot of really neat stuff. And, and I, I respect them and admire them so much. And the quilt scholars who basically created a field, you know, you could get a textile history degree, I suppose. You could get a history degree with a focus on women's folk art or something. But like AQSG, you know, damn. And the quilt museums, this is amazing stuff. And we wouldn't be here without them. So how are we gonna take their work forward and 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 teach and share the the heritage, the legacy that we have as, as people? Americans and people beyond America, damn it. I mean, wow, there is quilt making all over the world. So what you said, Kitty, absolutely. Yvonne is with it. Everybody's got the backwards end in the chat. <laughs> faith, hey, faith. I remember when you uh, broadcasted from London with a nude painting behind you. That's right. I didn't have the green screen, and I forgot there was like literally a naked lady. I think it was like a Modigliani painting, but I don't know that the algorithm cares. There, there were boobies. Um, it's so fun, says Susan, that my husband will watch with me as he's reading something and we talk about the quilts. Oh, love it. And some of you know that the show started out and we called it Quilt Church, changed to Quilt Nerd. Now we have a logo. I'm going to show you the logo again later. Let's get into the content. I'm in the new office, too, so the lighting is a little different. I think I like it. Yeah, yeah, I knew the, the new office, Kate. Uh-oh, what's the, you're muted, you're muted. It could be me. Sorry, oh, no, no, it's me, okay. sorry. <laughs> I just realized your new office, yeah, it looks different. It's different. It's Your setup. The, the setup is different, and I'm up, the window is in front of me, so we'll see. I mean, if there's kind of some rain rolling in, it would be so great if there was a rainstorm. I love that. Um, but, you know, as the light changes, right, during a show, it might kind of, I don't know what it's going to do to the green screen, because the green screen depends on, like, even lighting. So we'll see. We'll see. It's not like we haven't uh, had a few lighting mishaps and adventures along the way. Okay, so in honor of our folks who are not on this continent, I picked, um, I picked an intro quilt for you, for you, from Australia. Australia. I'm definitely not gonna do accents, nope. So let me get small, let me get small. Help, help, I'm small, I'm small, I'm in the ocean. That's bad. Don't be small in the ocean. If you're going to be small, I don't know. If you're going to be big, be in the ocean. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mary Keeps You Company. That was my little foray on YouTube, and I realized that, I don't know, I can keep you company like this, and it's way more informative. <laughs> I'm actually doing something active instead of just, like, talking. Oh, God. Um, okay, so this is a quilt that I think is very beautiful. Um, no. Oh. So on positive threads, being positive. 
people are so awesome. Okay, sorry. So this quilt is by Krista Roxandic. And I'm going to read to you about uh, what she has to say about this quilt. This quilt is from this book, and we're going to zoom in on it and look at it. Uh, this is the book where I found this uh, quilt. And when I saw this title, I mean, Australian quilts, the people and their art. First of all, I thought it was, you know, a heavy history book. That would make sense. And I certainly didn't expect it to be full of art quilts, but that's what it is. And it is really awesome. I mean, I'm always saying books are awesome, but I, you know, I don't bring on a ton of books that aren't awesome. You know what I mean, Steph? It's like, if it's not awesome. Well, you know, I've bought more than a few of them. So yeah, they're all awesome. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie's got like, she's like, this is a problem. Um, so I agree, but like, you know, really, really nice quality photos and uh, very, very interesting quilts. So uh, we are a, we're an Abe Books affiliate around here. So uh, if you buy these used books, I hope you'll buy them through the quiltnerd.link uh, Abe book address. And you know what, the reason we do that quiltnerd.link thing, that's a, a, a tiny URL like shortening tool. So you, so, Cause the Abe book affiliate links are like really long. So by doing that, that's how we make it a bit more tidy around here. Um, so this is what Christina, oh, sorry, Krista, it's Krista Roxandic has to say about this quilt. And it actually, I don't have a, a year on this, but um, she, I'll read you what she says. It's, it's not terribly long, but, uh, but it's great. It's from her, it's her voice, you know? This is called Pretty Point Bay. Cottons, cotton blends, silks, it's machine pieced and hand quilted. Okay, so here's what Krista has to say. <clears throat> Quote, after many years as a needle pointer, I'll go from top to bottom, let's start at the top here. After many years as a needle pointer, cross stitcher and lead lighter, lead lighter? What is that? Lead lighter, L-E-D, but it's, it's running off the end, it's a widow, like, or yeah, it's running off the edge of the paragraph, so it's L E. L-E-A-D dash lighter. So I don't know if it's one word or it's a com. What is that? Maybe so. Who knows? Okay. Um, I made a move into quilt making about four years ago. And this was published in. Oh, it's Simon and Schuster. Interesting. 1989. Okay. By the Quilters Guild. Um, once I started quilting, I knew this was it. I wanted to stay with it as, as a commitment. It took over my life. Um, I used to quilt until two o'clock in the morning. Oh, she could watch Quilt Nerd. And I couldn't seem to stop myself. I felt that quilt making had chosen me and I couldn't change it. I didn't do traditional work at all. I kept seeing much greater possibilities in designing whole quilts from original blocks. This rock is just so cool. I'm gonna hide the chat just for a second so we can see. I think sometimes during the intro quilt, that's kind of a good idea, but I gotta remember to put it back. Um, I felt that, oh yeah, okay. Uh, I became totally absorbed in a technique using almost entirely curved piecing, which I found useful in my landscape designs. In 1986 and 87, I completed a quilt called Living Together. The, the, this quilt was my first effort in exploring the sea, and I had great pleasure in creating a series of water quilts. I had to make a conscious effort to curb my enthusiasm in order to catch up with all the responsibilities a young family brings. I'm now working from nine till three in a studio away from home because I couldn't bear to see all the things around me that I should have been doing instead of quilting. Um, yes. Like, we play the church organ when we're like, when something hits us deeply. The workshops I attended given by interstate and overseas artists were precious to me. Wow, look at this. This is really, this is really cool stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I felt a strengthening of my desire to learn more and develop my skills further. I've been looking for a better way of working with my pieced landscapes, and I have one project which is different from my, pre my previous work. Uh, I'm experimenting with silk painting, mm. planning to blend pieces in with others. There's no other craft where I can express myself as I can with quilts because I can make a thing and say something with it as well. Wow. And that little little Zoom thing you heard, that is Susanna, the pie, joining us from Kuwait, because she can. Good, guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Now I'm doing German accents. Hey, Susanna, I think 
maybe you're gonna have to beep in again because sometimes the connection gets a little funky, you know? Is Anna's uh, here? I can see her. You can see her? I can't see her. Why can't I see her? Hold on. It might be because your screen is too small. Oh. She'll probably pop up if she makes noise. There you go. There you go. She's like banging pots and pans. Um, Susanna, I'm so glad you're here. This is great. So, oh, okay. Lead light. Interesting. Okay, so we've got a definition in there. Interesting. Very cool. Yeah, this is a really neat quilt. I like it a lot. And uh, yeah, it's a nod to our friends across the pond and around the world. I love it, man. I love this. The puffy, the puffy art quilts from the 80s. <laughs> favorites um and so yeah so that's the book where i got it and when you get used books you get wonderful things like this you know january 1990 to louisa for all the quilts you'll make during this decade saw this in perth western australia and i knew it was yours love well, Vern. i don't know something um and then this is it's just really beautiful you can see it's a it's a very nice book so i recommend picking it up i also wanted to let everybody know speaking of things around the world um we went to this exhibit live on tuesday yeah uh tuesday in new york city while i was there visiting hannah and doing stuff there um and we went to this exhibit and i said that i would share in the discord the notes and things that i picked up at the exhibit and indeed I will be doing that um, I just haven't had a chance because I traveled yesterday back home and it was crazy uh, there was this uh, um, brochure uh, there and this is in Czech but I believe hold on now this is in goodness I'm sorry this is in English nope it's not well if you speak check you will enjoy that but there's also just some notes and things that i scanned into a pdf and i'll put it in the discord so i'll do that it's on my list um okay yeah see check contemporary cool and that is in english okay so you can read about it um let me see where we're at okay um this is going to be a really fun show. Uh, at the break, as I mentioned, we are going to do a giveaway. We are going to be giving away the Pauline Burbage Thin Scarf that is uh, being sold at the International Quilt Museum in their gift shop. It's fabulous. The quilt that they have used from um, Pauline Burbage uh, to, to reproduce in this gauzy beautiful scarf is called Finn and I'll show you the quilt uh, next but this uh, the details here are um, it's 85 by 85 centimeters this beautiful scarf uh, it's polyester it's imported uh, and it's uh, okay yeah so so here's this and I got a couple more pictures of it it's this quilt Finn Finn uh, gorgeous right totally gorgeous 1983 um, I think I need to do something. Hang on, I need to do something with my with my display. Just one second. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I needed to do that. Um, so that is the that is the quilt that was um, reproduced for the scarf. You can see a little bit of it there. Um, it's it's gorgeous. And I, I bought it and I didn't know. I was like, am I gonna have this? And then I was like, no, I'm gonna give it away to the viewers, to the subscribers, to Quilt Nerd because. I really appreciate you and I want to show you that as much as possible um, here's the scarf opened up a $35 value um, the scarf opened up so it comes in the plastic and everything so we're gonna draw for that at the break we're gonna draw for it at the break amazing quilt Pauline Burbage also oh I didn't even think about it oh my god this is crazy Pauline Burbage is in the UK I did not plan it. We did not plan that. This is a bonus show. Crazy. Um, so also, if you're new, the backwards ends in the chat. We um, we love we love a backwards end in a quilt because the backwards end um, is something that shows up in these quilts from time to time that we look at. And um, they are, it's just a wonderful thing. And no one really knows when, when you have an old quilt with a backwards end, it's, you know, when there are letters on the quilt, there's applique letters saying, you know, love mother, or, you know, like usually, you know, union forever or something. There's all kinds of words on quilts and we love them. And sometimes the end is backwards and we don't, no one really knows why. It could just be human error. Sometimes the easiest explanation is the right one, but it's like, 
sometimes in a quilt, not all the ends are backwards, but like, and it, wouldn't they fix it if they were really particular? So if it's a really finely wrought quilt, but it's got a backwards end, it's like, she would have fixed that because she was obviously meticulous, you know? So we love it. It's just, it's, it's the kind of, um, I think dog whistle is a really bad, I think that's not what I want to say. It's code. It's yeah, dog whistle is like, I don't even, that's a definitely a bad word. I mean, it means like a silent communication, but I don't think it's used in a good way ever. Let's call it a secret handshake. A secret handshake. There you see, there you go. Great minds think alike. Secret handshake. Let's keep the dog out of the show. Okay. So that's what it is. So that's what we have there. Word and burden are very nice, nicely done. Okay, so this is a super fun show. I, I, we're gonna talk about Marion Coleman after the break, who is an extraordinary quilter uh, who passed away just a few years ago. We're gonna watch a short video on her work. Uh, it's about five minutes and look at some of her pictures and I, or her, her uh, quilts and I'm gonna read to you from an article uh, that was in the New York Times about her. And it's just, she's just amazing and you should know about her. Um, so we're gonna look at you know a single artist after the break. But this is a little different. Um, you know, I do like archive.org. I like archive.org and I have a long list of favorite books. Uh, archive.org, you know, you can, you can experience that for yourself. I, I don't like showing websites on the show. They're just not very visually interesting. So I kind of stay away from that. But archive.org, uh, there's a lot of quilt books that have been scanned into archive.org. There's 34 million books that have been scanned in. It's sort of a I don't know. It's just one of those internet things. It's amazing. So, so you can read a lot of out of print books there. You can't download them, you can't print them off, but sometimes I'll go in there and poke around and see what I can find. And so I found this series of books. And if you've been quilting a, a long time, uh, maybe you know about this series, but Great American Quilts was, it's, it's, a, it came out every year published by Oxmoor House. My mom and Liz published with Oxmoor House for a number of many years, I think. And I started flipping through this and there are patterns in this book, in these books. And so I'm less inclined to, you know, I don't get how-to books really at all. The, the ones I like are historical or they're gallery books or whatnot. And sometimes a book has a lot of patterns, but has some good history, okay? Sometimes there's a few. Anyway, but so it's so a Great American Quilts, every quilt that they feature in these books has a pattern with it. And so I was, I was totes dubs, as my sister Hannah would say. I was t totally dubious, totes dubs. By the way, Hannah might be able to join us in the chat today. I don't know, I hope so. Um, Nan, you have to like have some awesome screen name. I'm sure you will. Um, and so I'm looking through this thing and one thing stuck out to me. Well, I mentioned it in passing the other day and I was wrong. I was like, oh, the style shots in this one thing I was looking at, the Great American Quilts book are just like really bad. No, 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 I was not thinking of this, this. This, this is why I'm bringing it up. We're gonna look at quilt style shots today that are like the best I've ever seen. The best I've ever seen. And I was editor at Quilt Folk Magazine and we did some style shots and the style shots, you know, in case you're not totally familiar with the term, you can have a flat shot of a quilt that shows the whole thing. They're usually taken from above. The quilt is laid flat. There's a jib camera because you want to see the quilt finished, especially if you're doing a pattern or if you're making the quilt from a pattern. But there are also, uh, but there are often style shots where the quilt is laid gently draped over a chair. Perhaps it is hanging on a clothesline. That's a style shot. And it's, I guess you, it's kind of interesting that we do it now that I think about it. It's like, you don't have to see the quilt in the wild, you know, but but most magazines do, and most patterns have a style shot. And probably it comes from the fashion magazines, I suppose. Um, and so, me love Hannah too. Yvonne, I just keep, I don't know, I, I look down at the chat and you're, you're all up in my, in my chat attention, which is great. Um, so, but I wanna make sure, and Hicks says, if we use the ASL N with the letter, with, okay, well, hold on, with the left hand as our special greeting be too much? <laughs> what is, what is the, what is, okay, okay, Steph's got it. It's this. Oh, that's great. It might, I mean, it might be too much or we might be laughed at by people who speak ASL. But I, li I like how you're thinking, M. Hicks. I like the creativity of this group, including special handshakes, secret handshakes. Yeah? I think you made a tea, tea Mary. I think you made a tea. Oh, you made a tea. 
It's a two fingers over, not two, not between. Two fingers over. Two fingers. Oh, oh, I'm. I mean, yeah, I'm so. I think that's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that was the weirdest laugh. Okay, so we're gonna look at these style shots, and the, the thing is about style shots. Let me let me get to one. So here's here's a little bit. This is the Great American Quilts issue from 1987. I'm just up in the 80s. I'm sorry. I just it's like my time. It's my time. It's my interest these days. So style shots are they're not easy for one thing. Um, <laughs> let me just get up. Uh, they're not easy. They. I could do, I mean, I should do a YouTube video on how to style a quilt because I've seen them, I've seen them good. And we're going to take a look at style shots that are less successful. Believe me. Um, I, I'm glad that I can use this book because it's older. I, I wouldn't want to go through like someone, you know, patterns being produced today and be like, that style shot is the worst because I don't want to, you know, that's not what we do around here. That's not the vibe, you know, criticizing people like that, especially if they have, you know, social media accounts and they start flaming people uh me and um so so this is good that it's in the past but it's re it's not often that a style shot for a pat i mean having people for one thing having people in the shot like if you're taking a portrait of somebody and they're holding their quilt that's one thing that's a portrait a style shot is the quilt in the world and there's just not a lot of kids in cowboy hats playing cowboys in style shots these days it it's just not done and let me point out this is more we have to analyze all these things okay they're in a log house going on location in quilt folk we travel all around you know uh the team does i'm not making that magazine right now not that magazine <clears throat> so so you travel around and you're on location and you're in people's homes. And so you do style shots in their homes. So you're on location and it can be very challenging or it can be very easy depending on kind of how the, the house is. I don't mean if it's fancy, I just mean if there are places to hang quilts, it's great, or beds. But what it appears to be that this magazine or this publication scouted a different location for every quilt pictured. And these children, they are in costume they're in costume and they look great you know what i'm saying like he's got his little boots did they hold a casting call i don't know i don't know but he's got the whole thing he's got the whole thing and that is a damn wood it's it's a cabin it's some cabin your eyes are vibrating exactly oh and yeah yeah Okay, yeah, I'm pretty hyper, by the way, too. I've had a lot of coffee. So, so that's there. So, so Fran Nelson in Texas. Oh my God, I wish she was smoking. She has a pen in her mouth, but wouldn't that be amazing? If she was like, <laughs> like, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> um, no, she's she's got a pen in her mouth. Um, hey, Holmes, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, it's so well lit. It's hard to keep pics from having a yellow cast in a log house. I lived in one for many years. That is so cool. Actually, this is, this is appropriate. This may be the first truly appropriate time that this soundboard cue has played. That was awesome, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take, a, let's take a look at another fabulous style shot. Look at this. Look at this, look at this. I can't believe this. I can't believe what I'm seeing. More children, first of all. Looking like they came out of a Norman Rockwell painting or drawing, whatever. So here we have also, also the quilts are great. They're great. This watermelon quilt, I mean, I love it. I'm into it. It's like traditional, but like cartoon. The, the, wa the watermelons look like Jean Ray Laurie, you know, a little bit, actually a lot. I think she did, I mean, she, I know she did a watermelon quilt. I don't know, maybe they cribbed it from Jean Ray. Not a bad idea, she was pretty great. But then they have these traditional like oak leaf applique things happening. So look at these munchkins in their, he's in a romper for the love of God. <laughs> you can tell I've been hanging out with Hannah. I'm a very Hannah right now. Oh, a Snoopy horn, okay. Copyright. I mean, I mean licensing, whatever. Um, they have actual watermelon, which looks delicious and look oh we're not selling watermelon lemonade we're gonna sell watermelon it's creative there are so many props happening here 
I mean, it's really, it's really something. I hope that you're as interested in this as I am because balloons, I mean, just the work it takes to set up a shot like this and have these kids, it's, it's a lot. It's really a lot. Oh, okay. So this is for something I also wanted to show you just because it's really neat. Um, the arabesque jacket. So I should have scanned this as a uh, one page, but anyway, um, the, the jacket is this, is this, which from what I can tell, and Steph, you can, the cake can sew literally anything. So you're probably looking at this like, oh yeah, it's great. But it's a, it's a drunkard's path jacket. So a jacket using the block drunkard's path. Okay. And it, here's the thing. It doesn't look hard. Like, like it would be for me, but it's all these blocks and I'm just not seeing like curved seams unless it's in the block, which I can handle in that scale. But look at this style shot. This is, I'm telling you, this is like Vogue level. They're on a fence. The jacket's great. The lighting is awesome. Her perm is frizzy. I can relate. Um, and and the, the fresh flowers, the field flowers, it's really good. It's really good. Kimono shape, exactly. What year was this? 87, Holmes. 87. Oh, there was a dog in that last one? I didn't catch that. A dog, really? I mean, the, the, the fence is perfectly weathered. It looks like a Ralph Lauren ad. And I'm really, I'm here for it. I think it's great. And no quilts were damaged. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't know. The more I look at this quilted clothing stuff, the more I think it's great. The made from scratch, like this stuff. That's so cool. And we looked at the threads, you know, book the other day with Hannah and the, the quilted clothing there was awesome too. I don't know. I don't know if you're a real quilt nerd though, like, is it too much? Like I, I could wear like quilt earrings, but it's a little much. Okay. I think this is the last child one I have, but I mean, and I'm a little bothered by this. Like it's a little bit like too waspy for me. <laughs> It's just like a little too, but what, I mean, this is great. It's like they put the, it's the perfect color of red for that wall. Somebody had to find this house. Somebody had to find this house and these plants and it's, I don't know. I don't know. And she's in her little collar and her bobby side or her knee highs. I mean, what is going on? It's a quilt. It's a quilt book. I love it, but it must have cost so much money. It, the choir neck is wrong. White knee socks with everything, early 1960s. How did you keep them clean? I mean, I know they didn't and they had to be washed, but they gotta be so dingy all the time. I know. The lamp is perfect pairing. Yes, perfect. And, and I, I, it's not my, you know, number one go-to style, but the quilt is really cool. I think it's really well, it's really well done. It's really very pretty. Okay. And I like looking at these style shots because, you know, there's a quilt in every one of them. So it's kind of like, you know, it's what we do around here. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I am hungry. I don't eat on the show a lot. Well, actually I eat every show, but I eat crisps. It's different. Um, paintbrushes. Oh, I don't have, I don't have the name of the maker listed on my files for this. I apologize. Obviously they're all in the book, but I was really going for the style shots more than the, you know, than the makers. I, I'm pretty good about that because it's important, but I can't tell you who made this one. Of course it's in the book. Um, color swatches on the table, color swatches on the table. Paintbrushes, paintbrushes, perfectly, perfectly placed. A sketch, a painting, turpentine, very cool. Oh, wait a minute. Is this a painting of the quilt on an easel? It is, isn't it? I think it is. Yes, M. Sujan called it. I love this of the painting copying the quilt. It's just not done. It's just not done. I wish it was. That is a painting of the quilt. Uh, pretty, pretty great. Pretty great. Pretty great. 
Um, okay, let's see what else we've got here. Steph, this one's for you. This is Catherine Brainerd, who I have, I feel like that's a, that's a familiar name to me. Um, I feel like I've seen her work before. She might be quite famous and I just, I just don't know yet. But this one I wanted to pick, yeah, because A, cats. I know we have a lot of cat fans out there, uh, but Steph has two cats. And we've been talking about these cross-stitch quilts. And this, I mean, it, it, does it qualify? Like, I, I think so. It, right? A little 8-bit looking. It's 8-bit looking. It looks a little digital. It's got the, it's got the digital thing going on. And um, yeah, this one's more for the quilt itself than the style shot, but there is an adorable child in it. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's real sweet. It's real sweet. Oh yes, oh, her little cat. That's not a cat toy. Oh no, it is. It's even a cat toy. Um, and this says, Cat Quilt 2 was born shortly after Catherine's son, Alexander, was born. Um, she made Cat Quilt 1 in 82. <laughs> God, and then she made, okay, great. Yeah, great, great. Mm-hmm. This one's fabulous. The quilt, I mean, the picture is gorgeous, but I mean, that's 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 pretty interesting. I find like a, a, there are quilts in the 80s that, like there's the art, artsy ones, but then the traditional ones, I, Mom and I have called them contemporary quilts, contemporary quilts, which, it's like you take, because Jenny Beyer described herself as a contemporary quilter. She's like, I take, you know, traditional designs and take my own, interpret and make my own interpretation of them and use different fabrics, um, uh, con updated contemporary fabrics to make my version of a traditional quilt. And so she's, you know, if Jenny Beyer says something, if she calls her quilts contemporary because reasons, then that's what I'm going to go with too. And this is a really good example of that because it's a medallion quilt, you know, there's traditional stars, four patch border, it's a frame quilt, very traditional, but it's it's definitely of its time, right? It's definitely of its time. So, yeah, and I think, yeah, that's a very 80s fabric, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, Joe Diggs. This is a great quilt, a great style shot. Pardon me. The piano, amazing. But we want to talk about Joe Diggs. <clears throat> Somebody mentioned her before, maybe a couple times. Um, mm. Nose to Quilts, by the way, says they did it the other way around, though. Um, I remember your, um, your EP on art and quilts when quilters were asked to replicate artists' work. Um, let's see. Nose to Quilts, help me out. You, you were talking about the contemporary quilt style, right? My EP. Your e, my, my EP. I remember your EP on art and quilts when quilters were asked. Oh, yes, yes, the artist and the quilt thing. Yeah, absolutely, the artist and the quilt. When, when quilters, yep, were asked to replicate the paintings that other, or sculptures that real artists did. That's right, episode, yeah, the episode. Okay, thank you, thanks Marianne. Yeah, that's true, they did it the other way around on that, yeah, very interesting. Hey Pastrami, these interiors, I know, these interiors. And Joe Diggs, my mom, I think was friends with Joe Diggs. She's definitely a name I remember. She's a name Hannah would remember. She was just, I don't know, in our, in our world, or definitely in mom's world. And this is this is interesting too. I mean, these books are good. They're really good. I've got a few, um, we've got links for the two I'm talking about today, 1987 and 1991. Um, so if you wanna get them, but the patterns seem really, really good, really well written. And this is interesting to me, a line drawing of this quilt is like super instructive to me because I mean, I don't know how to put something like that together, but I suppose you cut out your shapes and you stitch it, you stitch it. <laughs> Knows it takes me a minute sometimes. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, another one that's like, oh, how interesting. What is, what is that fabric on this? Can you see that it's like textured? 
It looks like lace or something. That's that's a really odd fabric. It can't be. It's got to be just cotton. They're not messing with with mess and stuff. With, you know, with stuff. Yeah. Do you think that's chicken scratch? No, I think that is some type of like eyelet. No, no, it is. It, it is called chicken scratch. I thought it was. It I thought scratch? it was on the page. Yeah, chicken scratch. It's called chicken scratch. So what does that mean? What is chicken scratch? I was just like a quilt folk did a class I think a while back with Jenny mm -hmm. and she went to is it New Mexico where mm -hmm. Blair Stalker lives right yeah and Blair Stalker taught her chicken scratch and That's I didn't right. get to take the class but it looks so cool Jenny and Kay teach great classes yeah of course I just like did not even think of that um hey Betsy Dragonfly on my break at work gonna watch for a quick minute well you picked a good minute to watch because We've got these beautiful pictures of quilts to look at, and we're sort of analyzing, looking at them, analyzing them a little bit, but also appreciating how much work went into these beautiful photographs. And I can, I mean, look at the, they have the ruffly pillows, and oh, I couldn't tell what that red thing was, but it's the ties for the curtains. I think we had that lamp at some point, <laughs> you know, like it's sort of a fake uh, antique lamp uh, when we were chit kids um the red is nice and it's a nice it's a nice quilt too um stitch and dab if it is chicken scratch it's stitching on gingham oh right now this one and then i think we move into a few from 1991 these are all from 90, 1987 um this one sends me i mean there's a lot going on you know there's a lot going on this yeah, it's it's a great picture. Like, it's a great picture of a person with a quilt. It's 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 beautiful. I mean, it's just it's just beautiful. The wind is blowing her hair. That is a very traditional uh, Native American uh, quilt pattern. Um, Gwen Westerman. We visited her in Minnesota for the Quilt Folk issue. Her quilt is on the cover of that that issue, issue thirteen. And um, the little figurines, little girls with the braids, um, is on that quilt. So there's a very traditional quilt. And I mean, this, this teepee, I, I, I just, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's gorgeous in the, in the golden, the, the, they're um, Brown Eyed Susans, I think, there. So it's, yeah, Indian Squaw. It's called various different things, but um, really, really cool. Um, Sandy, Sandy McLean, McLean McLean, or McLean. Sandy's memories of quilting go back to the days when her father planted and picked cotton, and her mother carded it to remove the burrs and grass to make the batting. Men came to visit, and they would go, the ladies would go in a separate room and quilt, she said. Um, yeah, really cool. And so this is the, this is the, the pattern. And the braids are, it's, it's a textured quilt. <clears throat> you know, it's got, it's got a three-dimensional quality, I should say, because the little braids are often embroidery floss, and it's just darling. So, yeah, I mean, I just, I, this to me is next level. And, and the taking photographs of quilts, I mean, think about, think, think about the crew. You have to get the crew there. You have to set up. You know, you have to do all that stuff, and it just takes a lot of money. But they were able to make this happen. It's really interesting. Really? Oh, interesting. Okay, the, the, the pattern is for sale on Etsy, at least some, you know, some version of it, right? And uh, yeah, released commercially. Yeah. yeah, I was researching something recently and ran across it. I'm not going to provide a link because I don't know if it's, a, <laughs> if it's a shop that's selling it or if it's some legit knockoff, you know, some illegit knockoff. So. Right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah, that could be bad. We were, what were we saying the other day? Like, we have to be careful of recommending certain things because if they turn out to be like defective and damaging it's like well i learned about it on quilt nerd it's like oh my god no 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 we don't want to yeah we have to be careful now one day we'll be sponsored by i don't know i always think southwest airlines or an airline should advertise in quilt magazines that run advertising i mean quilters take flights to go to stuff you know, or like Hertz, Hertz rent a car. If you gotta go to a retreat or something and you're gonna all pile into a car and it's like, come on, what, where are they at? It, sh it doesn't need to be just fabric companies. It should be other things. If you're gonna run ads, look at this. This quilt is so cool. 
And so they have sections in the book about, you know, group quilts, and they have sections, a section called the artist gallery. I think this quilt rules. Look at the way that they did the baskets. Yeah, wine for quilters. Um, agreed. Um, wine for quilters. Susanna's got it. Susanna, can you get on that? Thank you so much. Uh, the colors are great. I love the way the vine snakes around. And just the baskets seem almost kind of art deco with that super wide, thin, thin handle. That's, to me, oh, Stitch and Deb says, I think that basket quilt was on the cover of Quilter's newsletter once. Really? Well, it would have been around this time, probably, in 87 or so. And then there's this one up here, which, that ain't no slouch. Look at all those, those checkerboards. The big and the little. I mean, that, that's another perfect example of a contemporary quilt. Gamer Granny! Ah, no! <laughs> I hit the wrong bird. Sorry, I hit the wrong bird. That's better. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the show and anniversary week bonus show. Um, yeah, very traditional center medallion, motif, center point of focus, focus, oldest patchwork game in the book with the, the nine patch, four patches, all that. And then, but then in updated fabrics, contemporary fabrics, and then straight traditional over there. Okay, here's a good one of that quilt. Look how they did it. Now, here's a tip for you if you're doing a style shot. I take great uh, issue with um, a style shot that where the quilt hits the ground. It's not a hard and fast rule. <clears throat> Rules are made to be broken, but we're gonna look at like four or five style shots from these great American quilt books that I think are unsuccessful. Cause like, okay, these are great examples. What are a couple bad examples? Because the thing is, I mean, some of you, A, wanna work in the quilt world, interested, you know, there's a lot of publishing that goes on. So, you know, maybe this is like a hot tip for you. Um, or some of you take pictures of your quilts to submit them to things, or I don't know. Maybe you should take pictures of all the quilts you make because you made them and you want to remember them. It's like taking pictures of uh, like your house. Like before we left London, I took pictures of the apartment. I was like, well, they might be kind of boring pictures, but I want to remember where we lived. So maybe you should take pictures of all your quilts. Maybe you already do. Anyway, so they did, I like, I like, I like what they were going for. And, and the quilt is touching the ground, but it is very, very carefully touching the ground. And it is symmetrical, or it is even, okay? Um, the chair is slightly touching, maybe not. Um, the furniture is perfect, the way they chose the furniture. And it's super matchy-matchy, but it works. I mean, that butter yellow is like the exact butter yellow in this white French door onto the garden. And the garden has a wall. Like, where are they finding these houses? Good heavens. Scouting. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm telling you, I've done a lot of style photography, a lot of it, all over the country. It's serious work. The idea that you would scout ahead of time a different location for every quilt blows me away. The grapes are great. It's a basket basket on the nose yes but also perfect um and and the other thing so so when a quilt touches the ground it just i don't know i feel like it's not realistic because we don't like our quilts to touch the ground i mean if they're fancy if you've got a, a kid's quilt that they're using obviously it's going to be trash but for the most part having the quilt touch the ground isn't realistic because it's like oh, get my quilt off that dirt that dirt floor, oh my God, get the quilt off the floor. You know, it's, don't, don't let it get grubby. Um, I included this because I looked at the Great American Quilts book from 1996, thinking it would be a good comparison to the 1987 book, because by 1996, I mean, think about how much the quilt industry had grown, monetarily speaking. I mean, if 87 was good, 96 is gonna be huge, right? Oh, hey, Mimi Quilts. We have a first time chat from Mimi. Mimi, I'm so glad you're here. This is great. That's a champagne cork for you. And Mimi, Mimi, everybody. Um, I might be a troller. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, I, think, I think not. I caught you on, a quilter, on the Quilter on Fire podcast and had to check out Quilt Nerd. Congrats on the anniversary. Mimi, I'm so glad you're here. Um, 
Brandy is a gem, a delight. Uh, I'll get to see her uh, again when, in Birmingham uh, in just a couple weeks in England because I know she's taking some friends there. She's going with some friends. Um, she is brilliant and awesome. The Quilter on Fire podcast, if you haven't listened to that, everybody, you must. Um, and I was I had the good fortune to be on that podcast. She, it, and let me tell you something. And I told it to her, and I meant it. She was, it was the best interview experience I've ever had, ever. She asked the, the coolest, most interesting questions. They were not standard issue. They weren't boilerplate questions. I mean, she's really good at interviewing. And she used to be a firefighter. That's why she calls her podcast and her, her stuff Culture on Fire. She's brilliant. Listen to the podcast, not just my episode. Listen to all of the episodes and check her out. Follow her on social media. All that stuff really, really matters these days. It really does um, in terms of making a thing. So, Mimi, I'm really glad that you came over from, from Brandy's show. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just I think she's really cool. And I was really, really glad to be on her show. So welcome to our show. It was great. Uh, and those welcome baskets are for you. Everybody new here gets welcome baskets from, from the group. Hey, thanks, Susanna. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, the link to the podcast. So anyway, so I was thinking that 1996, uh, the issue of Great American Quilts, or the, the yearly publication, the annual issue, as in we issue this publication, would be even more extraordinary, like even more money. You know, maybe they'd have like a quilt at Tiffany's, you know, draped over the jewelry case. Because the, the money at that time flowing through the industry was like bananas. No, no, it was not as good. Maybe they got soft. Maybe they got, they got too comfortable. Also, the printing was not so good. So, so Oxmoor House, maybe they, got, maybe they got greedy and they started cutting back on the budget. I don't know. The, the budget for printing because it just didn't feel as good. Oh, my God, Gamer Granny, you resubscribed for two months. Or, wait, did you give a gift? sub sometimes i think something's wrong about that is the kitty wrong does the kitty have the wrong thing on it is it it's for a gift subscription right the kitty alert yes okay and i think it is a gift system yeah gift sub okay gamer granny thank you i mean susan r michael thank you so much to um gamer granny you are a tier one sub you you just got a gift subscription from susan r michael and I know you've been around this show, and I appreciate you so much. And so now you can, now you, you might have subbed at one time. Anyway, the point is, Susan gifted you a gift subscription. So you get to, you're in the drawing. You're officially in the drawing for all the things. Uh, and you get access to the Discord. We call it the Disco, where we hang out when the show isn't on. And you help support the channel. And that's so awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Susan. And uh Gamer Granny, by the way, it's one of the, the best, it's one of the best screen names, don't you think? I mean, on Twitch, G Granny, I mean, it's great. So good job. Anyway, so enjoy that, enjoy that uh, subscription. It's a one month subscription and then, um, and then you can say, oh, I'm gonna keep, go keep this going um, or not. This show is always free to watch. Mimi, uh, the cake, Stephanie Cake, the uh, brilliant, co-producer of the show could give you that information. Uh, and yeah, it, I hope that you'll consider subscribing because I think you're our people and you should join us on the Discord. So anyway, so I did not include any pictures from the 1996 um, book because I like to pick the cream of the crop for you. So the 1991 edition is better. I just have a few more for you. Let me just see. Because I want to show you a few, a few less good ones. Oh, I took a lot of screenshots. I won't take that much time. But look, it's just a beautiful publication. And this, you have to give it to the, the editors. The editors make a difference, you know, because if there's a, a quilt that is on the ground in one shot, but they took a different shot and the quilt's up off the ground, if the if the editor picks the the one, the better one, you know, it's the editor's choice with that. So the, the better the, the publication, hopefully, uh, the editor and his or her team you can't do it by yourself, that's for sure. Uh, it's really the editor you gotta you gotta say good job to. You know, I, inset bookshelf is that's China bone China. Mimi, we're looking at these style shots of days gone by and just marveling at the quilts and at the 
uh, at the setting of them. So this is interesting. Look at that block. That's cool. That is really cool. Hmm. Hearts and Flowers baby quilt. Oh, that's a baby quilt. That's a baby quilt. She loved this baby. She loved the baby. I'd be interested in the pattern on this to look at it a little more closely. Hey, Padma. Padma, did I say hi to you? I don't know. Hello. Hello. Um, mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be interested in the pattern because is this uh, applique? It can't be pieced. I mean, what does that even mean? What does that even mean? I, lo I love this one too, so on. I love, I love this one too. Let's, let's take another look. Let's take another look. And I love that they didn't put it in a baby's room because it's wonderful in this crown molding fancy, fancy house. Damn. And the hearts, this is great. Maybe, maybe you all will be interested in picking up this book through our Abe Books affiliate link because you wanna make some of these quilts. Oh yeah, here's a pattern. Okay, I include some of it, yeah, yeah. So that's the flat shot, right? Style shot, flat shot. Looks like, yeah, it's applique, of course. Hey Mary, which year is this one? I, keep, I lost track yeah, of yeah. many of I know, them. I know, I know, it's 91, 1991. 91. Mm -hmm. The 96 one just didn't have as much good stuff as, as it, I wanted it to, so I don't know. But um, yeah, 1991. And so you've got your, darn it all, you've got your pieces, applique pieces. I know the chat's covering it up, but you get the idea. Um, just a couple more. Oh yeah, this is interesting. I mean, I'm sorry, like, wow. That, I mean, 80s, 80s hair, man. And like the lace collar, I'm not throwing shade. I love it, but it's like, I just, I just, I get ladies like this, you know, with the pearls and the lace and the big hair and stuff. I just, I don't know. Like, I feel like I am never going to measure up. Not that I need to or want to, but it's like, I don't know. I feel like I would go, is she from the South? Colorado, no, okay, that threw me. But like, I, I was, I did some work with Jim Shore. Uh, many of you will know Jim Shore, um, the extremely, famous, successful artist person. I did a couple times I went down there to do a, like a live event, like a sales event or something. I co-hosted that or hosted that and whatever with him. And also um, we interviewed him for Quilt Folk and I blurbed his latest book. Anyway, so his daughters are gorgeous and they're all in South Carolina. And I don't know, I just had this like, this moment, you know, and his quilts are wonderful. Uh, he has from his mother and, and his wife is lovely anyway. But th the Southern ladies, the Southern gals, I mean, in South Carolina, in this particular place in South Carolina, I mean, they just, their, their hair sort of seemed perfect. And I was just racked with insecurity and, and they didn't wear pearls and things, but it was like that. I don't know anyway, sorry going on a tangent. This quilt I wanted to include in the show because, hey, Qu Quilty Nancy, it's so good to see you. Welcome, welcome to the morning show. This, I thought this was unusual. It's less about the style shot on this and more about this. Hours spent studying flower and garden books preceded Linda's final quilt design for Lady Slipper. Her attention to the fine intricacies of nature are replicated with Trapunto quilting of hand applique flowers and embroidered embellishments on flowers and leaves. I mean, that's, you just don't see that, that's, that's original, right? It's just an interest, it's an interesting design. I think it's great and it looks, it looks like a kit quilt. They say something here, it, it looks uh, reminiscent of quilts that were used as throws for the small beds of the 1800s. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I, I I don't know, I don't agree with that. I'm not sure what kind of quilts they're thinking about. To me, this looks like a Marie Webster kit kind of deal, but, but that big wide swath in the middle is, is not like that. So, I mean, she's really good at quilting. And, and this, this is interesting, the stripe, the stripe in the background. One of the things, Mimi, if you're, I think you're, I think you're hanging around, the, the, the Quilt Nerd Show does, hopefully, I really want it to, is inspire people to do things, you know, with their quilts and the art that they make. 
because I mean, it, there's so many brilliant things that people have done in the, the, the background of a quilt being a long stripe. I mean, this might be sort of like a candy stripe or something, but a, a pinstripe as a background for applique, that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, this looks like a, I don't know if candy stripe is the word I want, but it's, a, it's not a pinstripe. It's something bigger than that. Um, lady slippers in Minnesota quilt. Oh, yeah. The ladies from Colorado, but lady slipper is uh, Minnesota. The ribbons on the quilt, they are. And there's, um, uh, there's embroidery stitch on there. And the quilting is really nice. Anyway, I like the idea of applique over the top of a stripe. Eh, anyway. Um, good job, Linda Nolte Evans. I promise not to be nervous if I ever meet you. Okay, I'm not going to go through every one of these, or I'll just do a lightning round. Rainbow weed. Whoa. Rainbow weed. But perfectly weathered. Perfectly weathered wall. Pops the quilt. Love it. Um, oh, this is one I didn't like so much. It's a little dark. It's a little murdery. Um, so let's look. This is, woof. We had this wallpaper, by the way. This, this right here in my, you know. Did anybody else have that wallpaper in their parents' house or in their house? I like it. Okay, so let's just say there's four. I think there's four that I don't agree with. I do not agree with this. I do not agree with this style shot because, let me move this over here. What's happening here? <laughs> like, the gloves, you know, like what? You're not gardening with the gloves, you know? You're not doing gardening with the gloves. And it's spilling out onto the ground. I just don't think it's the best. The flowers look sad. Everything looks sad. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, another thing that... Uh, which does really well as I was listening to a live stream just this morning while I was getting ready. Oh, look who it is. It's Marianne Fons on Los Porter. Um, and uh, the delay on Twitch chat is much shorter than the YouTube delay. Dust bunnies, yeah. Um, we wore gloves back then. Faith, you, did you, did you? What are you talking about? Oh, you mean in the 80s? Yeah, <laughs> I think you're, I think you're trolling. Um, I love it. Although, you know, if this is after some other kind of era, if this quilt is sort of based on another era, it could be true. But I, yeah, I, yeah, faith. I think I know what you're talking about. So, so the so the reason that this quilt is uh, featured here is I don't think the style shot's that good. And so I saw that first, and then I said, I know that quilt. And then I saw the picture of these people. My mother, it, it, was she wearing? Hang on now. Was she wearing light lipstick, mom? What, what's going on? See, I can talk about her because she's my mother, okay? Was this 1980? Oh my God. Mom, if you're in the chat, you still have some gloves, Faith? Yeah, 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 yeah. Gloves are a good look. I buy my nails, so I'd love to wear gloves. But you know what? I'm gonna say something that is gonna sound like, I don't know, bad, but it's really, it's really true. I think my parents got divorced in 86. So like if mom looks a little tired and stressed out, which I think she does a little bit, she has a very good reason to be <laughs> because that was, a, that was a tough time. Um, and I did want to show the quilt also because there's a story about it. My sister Rebecca took this quilt, took scissors to this quilt and it's gorgeous. It is a gorgeous quilt. Uh, you can probably tell. Uh, it's really, really pretty uh, applique applique red red and green on snow white and uh yeah she she took a pair of scissors to the edge of it and there's a little mending repair on the back that says you know this quilt cut by rebecca fawns you know age three something like that in in good fun of course but yeah steph did you i saw you go oh god no you know it's really funny that you tell that story because, I, you know, I may be thinking of the wrong one, but I know my mom took a class from your mom around this time. Mm. And I remember her telling me at some point mm. about a quilter whose small child cut their quilt and they had to, like, do a little bit of uh, creative applique. And I wonder if that was your mom that she was, t she was telling me about. You know, 
it's very possible. I mean, it's extremely possible. Um, I think I gotta plug in my, my monitor there for stuff, but I think we're, we're just about done and then we'll take a break. We'll do the drawing when we come back or Cake will do the drawing um, in the cake break, which will take uh, a few minutes for that. So that's interesting, okay. Um, and then the other one, just one more. Well, no, we'll do the lightning round. I think this is strange. It's like, it's like the heart, oh, we know that quilt. We just looked at it. It's like the heart patio is sort of like, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. I'm sorry, it doesn't work for me. This is a murder place. This place is haunted. It's haunted, obviously. There's like, a, it's not a gas lamp, but it's, it doesn't, I don't know what's happening here. It's dark. I think somebody's going to come out from behind the shadows. It scares me. It scares me. I don't like it. I can't see it all. You know, I can't see all of the quilt. It's sort of like deflated. And look at this. This is great. This is great. This is Larry Warwick from Seattle, Washington. Diamond Jubilee, 1973. Oh, you know, that's a great 1970s quilt. I'm always looking for 1970s quilts, you know, because like pre, pre, uh, I almost said pre-pandemic, pre-bicentennial. These are very interesting, very interesting era. So that's interesting in 1973. But um, yeah, I don't know, this, the style shot doesn't work for me. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's too flat. It needs to be up, it needs to be up. Boo, MX, boo. Uh, and this one is just all crunched up. You can't see it. You always want to be able to see the block in a style shot. Make sure you can see it somewhere in the in the quilt, somewhere in the photo. Make sure an entire block can be seen because that's the beauty of these things, right? And I think that is it. That's it. That's all I got. That's all I got. So there's a little style shot fun for you. Um, and now, and now, everybody, I hope you are ready. How do you shoot large quilts? Padma, I will answer that question because it's really good. Um, in fact, let me put on the cake break here and we can uh, answer it together. Oh no. Oh no, is my green screen showing? I think it is. Um, the, uh, the, the bigger the quilt, the harder it is, really, the harder it is to take a good photo of it. Oh wow, this is really bad on this. I didn't check it. I didn't check it. Anyway. Um, okay, Stephanie Cake. Take it away, my dear. <laughs> Susanna, it does. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go away, and you're gonna have the floor, and give away the Pauline Burbage scarf. In fact, let me bring up. Um, let me bring up. Wait, what is going on here with my thing? Anyway, uh, let me bring up that that wonderful scarf so people can see what's gonna be given away. Hang on. Um, well, I don't know if I can. I can't really, Steph. I can't really show the show the thing. That's okay, right? Yeah, it's it's fine. I mean, you showed it a few times. You yeah. can show it after we do the drawing. I love it. I think that sounds good. Okay, I will be back. And good luck to everybody who is a subscriber who could win at this very moment the beautiful scarf by Pauline Burbage, with featuring the Pauline Burbage quilt. Okay, I'll be right back. Take it away. Yeah, so before I, I reach into the random number generator, um, I know one thing that I really took away from looking at some of those style shots that Mary showed, you know, some of them, the, the first ones with the children were so well done. And I think a lot of people mentioned how, you know, that's time consuming. It probably costs money to put those together because you got, you know, you, you're paying photographers and you're wrangling children and all that stuff. But some of those later ones, um, you know, I don't know how many of you submit your your quilts to shows um, of those of you that are that are um, active quilters, but they they are very specific about quilts must be flat, quilts must be you know on a background or you know something that's not distracting. Quilts cannot have uh, you know any shadows on them and and things like that. So it's it's a pretty good. Um, you know, practice to look at those style shots that don't work because they'll tell you a lot about, you know, how you don't want to display your quilts and especially if you're you're submitting them. 
So yeah, that was that was kind of fun to look at those. Um, I wanted to before again before we do the drawing, I wanted to throw out a couple of um, interesting things that are coming up. Uh, I think Mary's mentioned a couple times that she and Susanna, who is my um, my counterpart, will be um, in Birmingham, and that would be Birmingham, England, not Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> But their trip to England will be for the Festival of Quilts, and I think that's week after next. So um, if anybody uh, in the UK or Europe is going to that, um, please be sure that you check out, look for Barry, look for Susanna, so that um, you can see them, because they will certainly be very sad if you don't. We're going to do a meetup and stuff, too. Yeah, 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 that's right. Susanna had mentioned that there's going to be a meetup and, and she'll be coordinating that on the disco. So if you're in the UK, if you're going to Festival of Quilts and you're not a subscriber, uh, that's a perfect time to subscribe so that you can uh, get there in the disco and, and get in on the meetup and all that stuff. So it'll be a lot of fun and I'm totally bummed I'm going to miss it. But they will be doing some streaming. So um, that'll be really exciting for those of us that can't get over there to Festival of Quilts. Um, so it'll be so much fun. So I guess you guys are probably waiting for me to do that selection of who gets that beautiful scarf. And let me pull up. I didn't. Uh, I didn't do my my sound effect this morning. I apologize. I know you guys love that fake sound effect. <laughs> okay. All right, so my random number generator, let me make sure that they are here. Um, so you made that rule. We made that rule for, the, for these, these giveaways uh, that you do need to be here for these. Okay. Yep, they're here. So, Susanna, should I wait till Mary's back or should I spill the beans? She says go. Okay. Well, it is my pleasure to announce that Kitty Hannah, you won that scarf. I don't know if you're listening. I can't remember if you're working from home or if you're uh, on the sly working and watching. But congratulations, Kitty Hannah won the scarf. Ah, there she is. Okay. So congratulations. And, um, yeah, Hannah, if you want to uh, just hit me up on the disco, either me or Susanna, about um, shipping and stuff. Or if you'll be in the UK week after next, <laughs> you can get it directly from Mary. Aw, yay, everybody's congratulating. I love that. You know what I love about this community is the congratulations that you guys give out. You know, I've been to... Um, I've been to a few, you know, quilt events and, you know, there's always been, uh, there's always those people that kind of, they hold their raffle ticket and then when they don't get it, they kind of toss their raffle ticket on the floor and they stomp away, you know, bad losers. But you guys are so wonderful and, and you know, everything that, you know, whether it's a, a drawing like this or just whatever's going on in your lives, I love it when, you know, I just watch the chat and everybody is so loving and, you know, you care about each other and those of you that are subscribers know in the disco oh my gosh it is like uh, so much like happiness you know everybody has a bad day but you come and you get on the disco or you join a stream and I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say like boo <laughs> everybody is like you know what this is the best part of my day connecting with you guys is so wonderful you know it's it's I I love you guys so much oh, I really <laughs> I, I told Mary a while back I would jump in and help her. You know, this is a volunteer gig for me and Susanna. Um, and we, we do this because we really care about you guys, too. And we have a lot of fun with you. So, congratulations, Kitty Hanna. Kitty Hanna? Kitty Hanna won the scarf. Kitty Hanna? Oh, yes. Oh, wait, no, not that one. That is beautiful. You know, the subscriber, the subscriber pool, you should, you should become a subscriber. Those who are a subscriber now, like... It is, it might just be you, you know, you can win. Like when this, when we've got 5,000 subscribers one day, you know, it, it, the odds are lower, but you know, all of, all of you are just, thank you so much for being here. And Kitty Hannah, you're, you're at the show so much and you contribute so much and we, we care about you. And I just, I'm so glad. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. 
Cool, man. Well, I will send you the scarf. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I think, Kitty Anna, did you post a picture in your uh, double pink or your turkey red? I can't remember which shirt it was. And I think it was you on the disco. So oh. the scarf will need a picture, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. You definitely have to. You have to do, you know, because you know why? Mm. Mm. Um, good, good, good. Excellent. Well, that is that is very good. So now for our second half of the show. Oh, no, I just I just closed that and I shouldn't have. But that's all right. Um, so oh, here's the Paula Nadal Stern background we had the other day. Um, OK, so I'm going to open that up again. And while I'm doing that, hang on, we're going to watch a brief video about Marion Coleman, a quilter that you should know, uh, you should definitely know about. So let me grab that video and we will watch this. It's a four minute, it's five minutes. And uh, here it is, here it is, okay. Let's see. All right, you can see that and let's do it. Hang on, let me see, let me see. There's just something, something strange about my screen. Okay, I got it. I got it. Here we go. I am Marion Coleman. I was born in Wichita Falls, Texas, and I live in Castro Valley, California. I am an NEA National Heritage Fellow. Quilting has allowed me to go places, meet people, and do things that I could not have imagined as a 10 year old or 20 year old for that matter. I'm from a family of quilters, but I never really picked it up until I was an adult. My great aunt, who lived to be 106, took me in under her wing. She's still. 106. Un 106. Okay. Till her I did want to say too, I'm sorry, I meant to say it at the beginning of uh, this section of the show that Marion Coleman uh, did pass away. Um, Stephanie Cake, can you Google that real quick? Because I, I, it wasn't long ago. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry, sorry. Her dying day would talk to me about quilting. The African-American tradition is certainly an old one that has its um, genesis in practicality. Recycling materials, making bedware, and I certainly started that way. It's always a thrill to think about the ancestors and what they've endured, and it gives us the courage to think that we can endure too. I do a lot of stitching, I'm a machine quilter, although I do some handwork. Um, I often write words in my quilts or symbols or things that kind of help, help the story because there's a, a, a multiple layer. I like for them to see it, and then I also like for people to be drawn into it to see mm. what else they can find. I just like for it to be so, a surprise, uh, the obvious and um, the mysterious at the same time. Because a lot of my quilts have people in them, uh, there are a number of stages. Sometimes I will make a transparency. I will print an image on, and then I use it to project onto my wall so that I can make it any size that I want to. Uh, and I make a pattern. Our friend uh, J.H. Casanovius uh, notes there's a Navajo blanket behind her in her interview portion. Cool. Very much like when you're making a blog pattern. And then I fill it in, and I make it as I go. She is absolutely the most outstanding quilter. As one who has sewn all my life, quilting has become my passion. Marion has enabled me to recognize that whatever I quilt, I own it. <laughs> it's my imagination that goes into it. I'm always interested wow. in presenting the human side in these quilts, and it's important to me oh, to get out in the community and spread it around. Marion Coleman's significance to California's traditional arts has been singular. She's been instrumental in taking quilts and textile arts directly to neighborhoods to bring youth together, community groups together. There's a great power in being able to tell your story as she so exemplifies through her narrative work. We've had the great pleasure of working with Marion oh. Coleman 
and being able to support her as a master artist. Her imagination coupled with her social consciousness is what makes Marion extremely important to California and beyond. Wow. Thinking about it is the longest process. People often say, how long does it take you to make a quilt? I said, once I get started on it, it may not take that long, but it's thinking about it, composing it, and getting it together. That's what takes the time. Mm. So there's actually saying what I wanted to say. Marion is a true gift to us. With our latest mm. quilt show, Neighborhoods Coming Together, Quilts Around Oakland, she allowed us to share the gifts of African-American quilters in the past, in the present, and to inspire our young people to move the art further into the future. Receiving the National Endowment for the Arts mm. Fellowship means an acknowledgement of the um, body of work that I've created through time, mm. my connection with uh, other quilters locally and across the nation, my connection with community members, young and old, and it is the highest honor I could have ever received, mm. and I am thrilled to be a fellow. Pretty cool, right? Pretty, pretty cool. So, Padma, I saw you note that there, the Textile Society of America did a, um, a memoriam to her. And it's funny, I have uh, some things to read <clears throat> to you. And I did, I, I pulled that and I forgot to print it. I just, I just forgot to print it because I have a few different things here. But uh, I did see that and I'm glad that you can check out that link. Thanks, Kate, for doing that. So, I've got a few pictures of her work. Uh, uh, to finish out the show and Marion Coleman one of the well I guess you know what, what I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do that oops sorry um okay well I could tell you how I first learned about her I, I am I am gonna tell you that so when we did the quilt folk issue the family issue when people could write in and tell us about their stories of quilts and family it was issue that we did during the pandemic at the start of it we couldn't travel so we did something different and we got uh, a submission from a wom woman named Aura Clay Aura Clay right yeah and she submitted this quilt and a wonderful story about it um, let me just move it over here this this is a detail shot of her of her quilt under the covers made in 2018 uh, a young bookworm is reading uh, in no so it's reading under the covers reading under the covers by Aura Clay and you know we there were so many incredible submissions um, but Aura's was particularly great and her quilt was great and all that but she told the story of learning from Marion Coleman she she said you know I learned from this genius person Marion Coleman how to make quilts and so that middle quilt that you see is uh, called May 1959 by Marion Coleman. And so we printed one of Marion's quilts. And then uh, on the left, on the left is one of Aura's, let's see, I think her grandmother, Aura's grandmother made that quilt. So her, her grandmother, the matriarch part of the story, Marion Coleman's quilt. And then that quilt on the right is from uh, Aura's 2017 Black Lives Matter series. 2017 Black Lives Matter. Uh, in which included quilts depicting her husband, brothers, cousins, and nephews. So it was a great story. And look, we ran a picture of Marion Coleman, uh, <coughs> pardon me, who, uh, and this was her getting the 2018 National Endowments for the Arts National Heritage Fellowships, Fellowship um, Award. So, so, because it was such a big part of Aura's story and we just loved it. And I was like, oh, wow. So that's how I first got um, educated about about Marion Coleman. Uh, Qua Qua Cat, hello Qua Qua Cat. Uh, and I saw, who else did I, uh, Mimi Larry. Mademoiselle Larry. Uh, 16, issue 16. And then this is, this is Aura's work. So it's called Walk in the Forest, based on a photo of her husband and daughter walking while on vacation in California. So I hope that's not, I didn't cross the streams too much, sort of going to this other woman's work. Now we're gonna look at Marion Coleman, but you know, that's if you're if you're paying attention, you learn about all these amazing people because of their uh, 
affiliation with maybe a quilter you know, you know. So this is, <laughs> there's three of these I put in here, these quilts uh, of cowboys, black cowboys. Long ago, I, I did poetry slamming long ago, and my mentor and the guy who started Poetry Slam, Mark Smith, he would go to the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering every, every year. The cow, original Cowboy Poetry and Music Festival. So it's in Elko, Nevada. I remember he would go and he would perform there. And it's, here's what it is. The quilts that you're seeing here, this one and the next two, were in an exhibit at the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering uh, at, in 2020. So she, so they did a whole um, sort of the theme that year was was black cowboys talking about the history of of that part of American history, which is so fascinating. And she had these quilts in the show. Marion Coleman did. Uh, I'll just tell you the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering is an annual celebration of the ranching and rural West and of lifestyles that are deeply connected to the earth and its bounty. Through poetry, music, and stories, ranch people express the beauty and challenges of that life. Each year during the heart of winter, thousands travel to Elko, Nevada to listen, learn, and share at what's been called the most honest and open-hearted festival in America. Whew! <laughs> Sounds good. So, hey Mary, you know, yeah. Uh, Warden Bergner just mentioned something, and yeah. I think she could be right. This, she said, uh, this could be a buffalo soldier, and I'm thinking oh. by the the thing on his sleeve, oh. maybe because I have a buffalo soldier, like literally a block from my house where his home was. Really? And, uh, that's what his uniform looked like. Wow. Now, can you tell me more about the buffalo soldiers? I, it's yeah, it, it's so familiar, it's, but yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, you know, these were often men who were enslaved people uh, who were offered their freedom if they joined up. That's right. <laughs> and uh, I think wow. in some cases, and again, I apologize, I, I, I don't know all of the sure. specifics, but um, these men fought like proudly for America. Wow. You know? Wow. And for a country that had not given them anything in return to that point. So, wow. um, they did find, I think they finally, it might have been in the 1900s when their families fought for like the veterans' benefits that mm. most Civil War soldiers got. Wow. So, um, but yes, they were, uh, so, and I think there were some free men of color also that, that joined up, but sure. in a lot of cases it was, an, it was an opportunity to become free, to fight for your country. It's kind of sickening, but also yeah. incredible bravery, oh you know, God. incredible bravery. Uh, I just like, yeah. You, yeah, you, sickening and also inspiring. Like, it's like a very weird mix. Kind of like American history. Sickening and inspiring. Hey! Hey, everybody! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, thank you for that. That is that is so interesting. We learn about the world on this show. We learn about the world. It's, it, quilts take us everywhere. So here's another piece. Uh, this is called Riding High by Marion Coleman. I mean, the... Says, look at this look at the and oh my god wow uh one of the pieces the last one i have i think about I have about six or seven um well yeah about six of, of her quilts to show today before we have to go um carolyn maslumi has several marion coleman quilts in her collection and uh there's one i have pulled from sakwa the sakwa website that is in carolyn maslumi's collection and carolyn maslumi has i don't know her collection is uh, un amazing. You know who's going to be at the Birmingham Festival Festival of Quilts? Michael Cummings. He, yeah, the Michael Cummings. We've talked about him on this show. If you don't know who he is, I highly recommend checking it out. In fact, you should check out the Quilt Nerd episode that where we talk about Michael Cummings. Um, yeah, he's... Have we talked enough about him? Anyway, he's a very, very, very famous, successful artist who works with quilts and... Uh, I mean, he, he's got an exhibit there, and he's going to be there. I, I don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freak out. I'm going to fangirl out on that situation if I, if I meet him. Oh, my God. Uh, what do you do? You just say thank you to the person. <sighs> what do you say? What do you say to Michael Cummings? This is called, let's see, uh, Ready to Ride. Ready to Ride. Have you ever tried to draw a horse? Hey, Mark A. Wesley. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. 
Champagne pop. Jen make shapes. Jen make shapes. You've been here. <laughs> I don't know. What if I just call out people? He's like, like, miscellany. You know. Yeah. My great cats. Like, anyway. Just randomly. It's, I'd probably scare you. Like, oh, what? I can't even draw a horse in here. This wonderful rendering here. Okay. Um, and then this one you saw. We ran a picture of this in Quilt Folk. Um, May 1969 or 59, I think. Uh, look at the faces here, the portraiture. Incredible. I love how, okay, so, so the faces have these diff several different fabrics. Not many, not many different fabrics, but a few. But then the black hair is just solid black. I mean, that's, to me, that is sort of, it's so artistic. It's like, oh, it's artistic, but it's like you can render a portrait in quilt form and put, you know, incredible detail. We've seen it. But this is like sort of impressionistic, or it looks almost like a photo, you know, photograph, like like actual black ink from a photograph. And when artists make choices like that, to me, it's just it's just next level. It's so beautiful. My great cat's the same. I get, I can draw a horse, but I don't know if you know what it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Look at the little socks. Oh, kids in socks. It's like a theme for the show. Um. Here's uh, this one. This is this is called Ruby Bridges. Segregation of white and colored children in public schools has a detrimental effect upon the colored children. The impact is greater when it has the sanction of the law. For the policy separating the races is usually interpreted as denoting the inferiority of the Negro group. A sense of inferiority affects the motivation of a child to learn. Segregation with the sanction of the law, therefore, has a tendency to retard the educational and mental, she had that in brackets, so I think that was a word added to this quote, uh, to the educational and mental development of Negro children and to deprive them of some of the benefits they would receive in a racially integrated school system. Yeah. William France Elementary School, New Orleans, Louisiana, November 1960. Oh, uh, yeah, that's Brown versus Board of Education. Yeah, right, 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 exactly, exactly. Ruby Bridges, that all makes sense. What a beautiful little girl, oh my God. So yeah, some of the quilts that she, she made, Marion Coleman, were, you know, scenes of life, you know, these, and then, and then there were story quilts like that that told, told a specific story. So this is the last quilt we'll, we'll look at today. Um, uh, we usually run, you know, about two hours on this show. The live stream format, I meant to say this at the top of the show, the live stream format is different from other formats. It's, it's kind of singular in its ability to let us do the things that we do, sh talk about things while seeing them. It's really cool zooming in, watching video together. Uh, and there's no time limit. And so we can just hang out you know there's really great half an hour shows there's great great shows that are shorter but we just you know we just get together a lot of people sew while they're watching so you know it's a it's a chill vibe it's a chill vibe we're exploring things together not a presentation not a lecture anyway and we learn about people like marion coleman and can take our time discussing them uh the sky this pieced sky so good. Grover, love the AM spot. Thanks. Grover, it's great. I'm so glad that you're here. I've missed you. And you know what? You know what? I, look, we're going to keep looking at this quilt. I'm going to take a poll. Steph, do you want to put the poll up or you want me to put it up? You want to do it? Like, I think you got to do it. Oh, I do have to. I have to do it. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. because we can't share yet. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, we have so many things. So many things to figure out and so little time. And we both have to make money <laughs> somehow we have to figure that out too um okay so i'm gonna do a poll real quick how many oh wait mm, okay would you would you like to see a morning show take morning show weekly because then yes no. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. I got it. See. Yes. Uh, 
add it. <laughs> and then I, so here, are, here are the things that we'll go back to. But this is important because we, we I love, I like this morning thing. I gotta say, I really like it. Uh, and then, and then Grover just said you liked the morning slot. We know that all the folks who can't watch in the evenings will like the morning slot. Um, so I'm gonna say the poll is: Would you like to see a morning show weekly? Option one's gonna be yes. Add it. <laughs> Put another show on the schedule. <laughs> Don't get rid of the other ones, but add it. And I'm gonna say no, not if it takes away an evening show. Oh no, it's too long. I'm just gonna put yes or no. <laughs> That's all I can do. Yes, no, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's probably not gonna help as much, but okay, here we go. Start the poll. So, so in the chat box, there is a little poll that popped up and you can vote on what you think. It's at the top of the chat, at least it is for me. And then you can you can uh, you can vote. Word and bird nerd. Y you didn't miss the don't. You had to say it right. I thought nobody would notice. I don't have actual donuts. I thought I would, but I ran out of time. But I did eat my my power bar. Okay. So anyway, sorry, Mary and Coleman. You are definitely <laughs> worth looking at, and I'm doing polls and things. But it's but it's an important thing because we want people to be able to join and um, and and see this beauty. Right? And if this is a great time for, for people, I have not asked Stephanie Cake if she would want to do that. Your input is important. Definitely vote in the poll. Um, what do you think? It's fun, right? I think the nerds have spoken. Oh, I yeah? Start getting up early some days. <laughs> oh, what are they saying? Oh, yes. Oh, my. Well. That is a that is a overwhelming majority. Well, I'm happy to hear it. You know, I'm happy to hear it. It's interesting, oh, and that's what. Uh, okay, we have some photo, photo. Oh, look at the look at the bench. So I'll say a couple words about the schedule and format when we're done. But anyway, so so if you are an art quilter, or if you're not, or another thing that quilt nerd can do for us all is just be being more aware of these people. If there's a quilt show that comes in your area, you know, is is coming to you, you know, at an art museum or a gallery or a quilt show near you. The more names you know, the more important going to that show will be. You know, if you have a, um, you know, only so many you can go to or only so many trips and so forth you can take per year. I mean, now you know Marion Coleman. Maybe that'll be the trip you take. Or maybe that's the one you'll really change your schedule for. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, all right, everybody. I want to tell you that this is the next giveaway. On Saturday or on Friday night, Friday night, tomorrow night, uh, it's the official anniversary date of Quilt Nerd, August fifth, twenty twenty one, and so now it's August fifth, tomorrow, twenty twenty two, and that's one year of doing this uh, crack up, and we've come so far, and we've learned so much, and we there have been tears, um, and so t tomorrow night is the big giveaway. I'm going to give away. We're going to draw a name for the the kids. Uh, for quilts Nepal quilt uh, we were gonna give it away I was gonna give it away months ago but we decided to wait I decided to wait uh, at, but at the time is now and so this is a baby size quilt it's from quilts for kids Nepal it's a uh, it's not an NGO but it's a nonprofit organization that helps um, uh, facilitate women in this in this particular community or in various communities in Nepal make quilts to sell uh, in order to help their communities you know thrive and and send kids in particular send kids to school and they just had they just posted something about you know a, a girl who was helped by quilts for kids in Nepal go to college um, and so it's really neat and the quilts are really neat and and some of you will be familiar with quilts for kids this is a not affiliated with that this is quilts for kids in Nepal uh, there it is quilts for kids in Nepal many threads one love and it's just cool it's just a cool organization i love it and this baby quilt i think they're about 200 dollars, maybe 250 um i'm not sure but I, I bought it i don't know probably a couple years ago and it's just been in its plastic and and i once i started quilt nerd i saw that quilt i was like oh it's gonna be a giveaway so we're gonna draw for that tomorrow night so you should definitely be here for that sorry just gonna flip that around so you can see the label and uh and that'll be really great and i'm gonna wear a dress oh i did wear my my diamond earrings today. I forgot to mention that for this bonus show. Okay, um, the backing fabric is cute. Okay, great, so cute. 
Okay. The poll finally showed up for Grover. All right, well, vote now. Yeah, it looks like a morning show maybe in our future. And that's what I'll, that's what I'll end on actually as a programming note. Let me, I'm going to get big in one of these bedrooms. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> wow. Woo. Um, and close the show this way. Let's see. Yikes. Wow, that's weird. Okay. Um, everyone, this has been a delight. Oh, this is funny. Join me in bed. For the morning show, right? I'm in, I'm in bed. Help, help, I'm in bed. Year two is going to be really great for Quilt Nerd. Um, there are many exciting things happening. I've learned after a year of doing the show to under-promise and over-deliver. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you about all the things that are sort of happening or hopefully going to happen. I'm just going to let you know when they happen. And yeah, it's going to be a great year. And um, one of the things that we're going to do in this coming year is you know, play with some changes, play with, you know, it's the quilt nerd show you're always, you know, you know and love, but you know, the quilters newsletter Friday, I love doing it, but maybe we're going to switch it up a little bit. Maybe this, maybe it's once a month and we do something else every, you know, every other, I want to keep it consistent in terms of what you're getting for your subscription. Like that's all very important to me. So nothing's going to be wildly different, but you know, Quilters News on a Friday. I feel like it's time to switch it up a little bit. Maybe, maybe we, you know, the morning show, you know, maybe it's Tuesday mornings. Maybe it's Thursday mornings. Maybe we'll play with a few different things because it's still so new. It's such a new thing. So in the, in the second year, we can try all kinds of things. Find, find the secret sauce and find it knowing that that might change too, you know, because people change, schedules change, I change. Um, so look for that, you know, look for those, those tweaks and having some fun with what we do and how we do it. Uh, I want to travel more for sure, take you to more cool exhibits and, and, and grow the nerd community because there are more of us out there. That is for sure. Uh, if you're catching the replay, uh, I am so glad you, that you did, that you are watching it, uh, hit the like button and all that stuff, subscribe, all that stuff. And, uh, congratulations. Kitty Hannah's going to be in a sexy scarf. Don't just be in this, not just the scarf with clothes. Um, and then also uh, thank you mods, thank you cake, thank you Susanna. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central, Friday night, August 5th. Let's draw for that quilt and just have fun and look at some great stuff as we always do. Okay, everybody have a great day. Good things ahead indeed. You got it, Faith, it's my pleasure. Okay, see you later. Oh, I think the mic's still hot. I have to fix that. <laughs>